And welcome back. It is time for the last match of the day. This time we have NYXL going up against the Hangzhou Spark. And not to not to jinx things as we sometimes normally do. Wolf, I'm excited about this match. Uh, I mean, it couldn't be it couldn't be as one sided as the last one, right? Um, and both these teams couldn't yeah. be less prepared than Soul Dynasty, right? So, uh, I think it's going to be good. Right, yeah. I'm hoping. I, I think it should be. <laughs> I think it should be solid. Please? Yeah, I, that's, I've got that, fingers that crossed. Hope. That is the dream. That is the dream. Uh, is that this ends up being a solid, uh, solid series here? Um, so yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. I do have to say, I really liked. Uh, if you guys didn't see it, Lip tweeted after, uh, you know, just moments ago. I can't exactly repeat what he said because there's some some naughty language in it, but. He basically acknowledged that the EMPs were not fantastic. Is all I'll say. Sure. Um, so I like the uh, I like the self awareness there. <laughs> so but. we're gonna take a look at New York's lineup. I'm just thinking about the EMP as the last map. Get me off this wild ride. Um, yeah. <laughs> New York's starting six for our final series of our Asia matches this evening. Our Sabiobi, Libero, Mono, uh, Ma Mono, Hoppa, Jonak, and. Animo, so uh, you know the normal lineup. You'd expect to see no. Who are you? And Libero's kind of been, I feel like, coming into his own on the echo position at the yeah. moment. Not, um, not really seeing too much more. Who are you? I don't think uh, for a while. May's banned. Um, so I, I was just about to say that it's a wonderful time to 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 see Libero in and, and have the May taken away, so we don't have to worry about him playing that we get to see him on something a bit more mechanically challenging and i mean seeing echo when her kit was first unveiled it, you just kind of think of libero and you're like okay yeah this guy's just he's gonna nail it he's gonna master yeah i mean libero is a smart player who's revolutionized a lot of heroes um including may before uh, everyone hated her uh <laughs> he was like the first really really good may um <laughs> along with hoxal yeah. and, and other korean mays that we had um who Are You was always a really good May too, and for some reason New York Excelsior is, is often favored putting him on May over Libero, despite Libero's history with the hero. Either way, I mean, May is is removed from play this week, not in the hero pool. Yep. Um, who Are You, not in the lineup, and I don't think we'll see him uh, substituted in throughout this series. Uh, I mean, if they want to run this Genji defense, then perhaps we will see Who Are You subbed in, but something tells me that that is probably not going to be the case here for NYXL. Uh, I, I think that they might have things a little bit more figured out, so they don't want to do that. Yeah. But that's just me spitballing here. I mean, I think that what we saw from Soul Dynasty earlier with Genji uh, was really strange, and not only does it seem like... And I'm not trying to just, like, totally put the Dynasty down right now, but... The execution of the Genji strategy we saw in Gibraltar was really, really weak, and it didn't look like it was very well prepared at all. It almost felt like yeah. they were winging it, like I said, on, on the cast. Um, whereas what we saw from the Chengdu with their Genji was extremely well prepared, well practiced, and yes, it was shut down, the, the follow-up B push with the Nano Blade. There's a huge night and day difference there. Um, I think in general, only Chengdu is really going to be trying to run Genji comps like that in Asia. But we'll see if I'm wrong. We'll see if when we head into Assault, uh, New York pulls that one out. It would be it would be fun to see. Obviously, anytime who are you gets to go over onto the Genji, uh, or even Libero playing it, then that that's always going to be a very exciting time. Hopefully, if they do that, it doesn't fall quite as flat on its face as it did earlier on. Uh, we've been talking about NYXL quite a bit. Now we can talk about the other side of the team that they are going to be facing, which is the Hangzhou Spark, and they're starting six. Yeah, the Hangzhou Spark, a team that I think has played a little bit below their potential throughout the season so far. They're Excuse me, they're starting six today will be Godsby and Adora on the DPS lineup, Gushle and Sashin. Sashin's still coming in for yep. Flex Tank and Bebe and IDK, of course, to round things out. Um, again, a mostly unchanged roster uh, for the Hangzhou Spark this season. So that pre-existing synergy you would have thought would carry over really well into the season and uh, it would have made them a pretty dominant force. But it just feels like perhaps Moon's coaching um, for Shanghai has kind of put Shanghai above them. And then, you know, Hangzhou has fallen to a lot of the other teams throughout the Asia region in upset losses. Uh, it's hard to know where Hangzhou's heads are at because they're one of those teams that really flies on the radar. I feel like of all the Asian teams, 
um, despite being the bright pink one, the team that has the least color at the moment, the team that you look at and you think, well, it's hard to really point out or 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 say exactly what Hangzhou's style is. They're very vanilla. I think that might, you know. You know what I'm saying? Like, in-game, in-game. Yeah, yeah, just kind of like a, a lack of in-game flair is, uh, I think, what you're getting at there. And, yeah, I mean, they play standard. I can definitely see that. They play standard. They don't have... You know, Godsby is arguably their best player and their most flashy player. I've got Gushway as well. But despite this being a meta that you would think Godsby would excel at, and Gushway obviously on Winston in a very Winston-driven meta, you know, when you start talking about, oh, it's Gushway on the Winston, you're kind of like looking in, into the past, right? You're watching old highlight clips. You're watching World Cup, right? China. Yeah. And you're not thinking about the now, and it makes you wonder, you know, what happened between gone to your primal blade Gushway and now, why isn't he playing as well as some of the other Winstons? And it's it's a tough question to answer, really. Well, it's a new week, so maybe a new Hangzhou spark in their performances, and we'll we'll see if they can add some oomph to that play uh, as we do get ready to jump in. Speaking of play, though, uh, we'll take a look at our map pool. Go over that one very briefly here. Busan will be kicking us off for control, and then from there we will have Temple of Anubis yet again and Gibraltar. So Gibraltar for escort uh, all three series today. So. Yep. And we'll, we'll have... see another different iteration of Gibraltar this time around. Sure. And we'll have Anubis twice. So, I mean, that is one of those maps where, you know, historically, you'd see that Who Are You Genji on, but... Yeah. I mean, Libero can play Genji as well, and he's more flexible. Yeah. So it's, again, pretty unlikely, but a lunatic high fan can dream, you know. <laughs> that would be, yeah. That, that is uh, that is very true. And keep your fingers crossed for that. Keep your fingers crossed for a close series between these two squads. We'll see what happens as we do kick things off here. See what these guys have pieced together for us. I mean, one thing, of course, to keep in mind is uh, we talked about the May being banned, but if the Tracer is also unavailable for play, so we'll not be seeing that Godsby Sabiobi Tracer showdown. Yeah, not at least for the start here. I think this is going to be Libero swapping after the teleport. So, otherwise this composition is a bit puzzling. See if uh, that ends up being true. Yep, gonna go over to the Echo. So, Hangzhou running the counter to the uh, Sombra and Echo. So, showing a little bit of extra flair, a little bit more color than usual here, trying to run a counter comp. About to be can both shut down the Sombra with flashbang, but also pressure the Echo from a distance. Can work a treat for them. And we'll have to see how the Zarya v. Diva matchup plays forward here for both of these squads and who can get the upper hand there. Jonica, of course, on that Zenyatta is going to be able to counter out these Graviton Surges quite nicely since there is no Bionades available for the Hancho yes. Sparks, so and they cannot deny that healing coming through when they all get clustered together. You also, First on the other point lockdown, though. Yeah, Sparks. well, I'll let you finish play by playing this because it's not over. Uh, you know, it's going to be a leap out. <laughs> Romano, he'll stay alive. Okay, well, I was just going to say, um, <laughs> Sasha and running the Zarya is kind of cool, though, because you don't really need a D.Va here against what New York's running. And he's, it's much more difficult to kill than a D.Va. And you also are going to struggle to farm Ult Charge as a Sombra versus a Zarya, much more so than you will versus a D.Va. A D.Va is kind of free game, right? You're going to get hacked a lot of the time. You're just going to be shot, left-clicked to EMP oh Charge. Boy. Well, Godsby finds that first kill there onto Jonak. Pops. That I and will just be the knockout there on Hot Buzz Mech as he goes over the side onto the onto the train tracks. So good first defense here from the Spark, and they're already moving up towards 50%. But yeah, I mean, massive York, amount of ultimates getting ready to come through for NYXL. New York's EMP runs into the same lack of transcendence that we've seen from a lot of our teams this evening already. Say, Bilby going to farm the last part of this, looks like, on Adora and actually prevent some Molten Core. That's massive. Yeah, they get the hack coming through, shut him down, jump forward from Sabiobi, gets that EMP off, catching four members on the side of the spark, but instantly is shut down by Sasha. It's a great turnaround. Hit coming through, pushes Hotpa off the point. Leads to him getting taken down. Mono with the Primal Rage, however, does manage to find Bebe, sending him off the side of the map, and Leroux gets rid of Godsby. Now IDK eliminated as well as Sasin. And we'll just be the cleanup coming through here as they get rid of the off tank, get rid of both supports. See Gushwe trying to charge his way off the point to safety, but is unable to do so successfully. But 84% accrued for the Hangzhou Spark with yeah, the number of ultimates that they have for this exactly. free approach is huge. I mean, it's, it cannot be overstated how close they were to turning that. Sashin had grab, he was at 100 energy. 
That was a really, really close call. The rally timing, if it were a little bit faster from IDK, had Adora live there. We're looking at, you know, we're going into round two right now. Hangzhou Spark, 100% complete. They still have the grab, but building up that energy is going to take a little bit of time. They have to slow push this. They don't have an EMP or any sort of other initiation tool, so it has to be that kind of slow build through. And that's why the York is actually taking the fight to them away from the point right now, where Zarya won't be able to take that big power spike. Uh, so they're going to rotate now onto the point themselves to force New York to take that fight on the point. They have the window Ooh. down. Godsby gets a shot through on the Libero. Immortality field here to try and keep everybody else alive. Solo grab used on to save Yobi just to get him out of the fight. They know that that EMP is going to be coming up pretty shortly. Jonak will use the Transcendence to keep the rest of the team alive on the point, but as I say that, he himself will fall. Multiple shots through from Godsby and Bebe just manages to take him out. Godsby getting beaten battered closer and closer to the train tracks but will not get knocked off will find anything with the dead eye but zones mono back and it leads to his demise now it's 92 percent on the board i feel like say bilby just looked back at, at nene and the team house and gave him a knowing look after that solo grab connects <laughs> and locks the sombra out and this looks like a, a done deal on this first round they're just trying to, to stall here say bilby has emp but the pre-rally is out for idk it's got to be a big one, but Mono is already so low with the Wrecking Ball. The EMP will come through, manages to catch three, but Safe Yobi again upon using the ultimate is taken down. Godby finds a follow-up kill onto Anamo. And now Jonak is going to be gone, so there's no supports. They don't have the rally rolling. They do not have that armor. Stuns onto Mono off screen. Here, another Deadeye here from Godsby. He's a little bit of chip damage, but no real threats to pressure him. And that will be the closeout on round one. Downtown goes to Spark, 164. So two unique things about what Spark are doing, and it's not completely unique because we have seen other teams do it, but two things that led to their success and two things I think that they're executing better than some of the other teams is they're running the Zarya. And Sashin has proven himself to be an incredibly gifted off tank despite you know his entire career leading up to this moment was he was a flex DPS, a, pro a projectile DPS. And so he's playing really well in the Zarya. You don't give a ton of EMP charge to save Bilby that way and you're controlling the point, but also IDK's rallies. He's pre-rallying a lot of these EMP fights. They're not running Zenyatta. They're not running the Transcendence to counter these, but the armor actually is kind of more impactful sometimes than the Transcendence if you can use it at, at the right moment because it lingers longer than Transcendence, so you get that extra armor for all of your team, and it helps mitigate that EMP damage. It can't be deleted, and it's really cool what we're seeing from IDK here. I like Hangzhou's style, and they're going to run it again. Now Jonek is going to be sitting in with that Ana. Godsby bionated. Just go ahead and roll back around the corner to stay protected. Spark advance up. Going to be the first ones to get the lockdown on the point. No contention coming through yet. Just the last second. Will we see someone push forward? But you look at the tank line just on the top left of your screen right now. Hotbot Mono are just getting chunked out. Uchwe and Sashin both staying relatively safe hovering behind the barrier around the pillars. They have that advantageous position and they have that first lockdown on the point and already things are looking very good for them. It's so good for McCree to this point of Busan, which makes it so hard for Libero to actually threaten anybody. He has to play so safe, which means he can't do a ton of damage. He's not as impactful as he'd like to be. As you can see here, I mean, dueling Adora on the flanking Torbjorn is all he can do and he has to go forward to be safe now. Yep. Mono. Nanoed up, but Libero gone. So threat out of the skies now, Mono eliminated as well. And this is just not working. I mean, if you're Mono, do you swap over to the Rhine to try to match here? I don't think you can. The primal Rage, looks like the answer is going to be no. I don't think you can this late into the game, not without a Zarya to, to pair with, or without a different composition. Say Bilby can't run Tracer here. He's running into similar problems as he is on the Sombra, obviously against IDK, but also the flashbangs from Godsby. And compositionally, Hangzhou Spark is running a really smart one here, but the execution is even better. Say Bilby has EMP. Bilby. This has to yeah, be it. Like, see if he can stay alive longer than two seconds after using this one. Jumps out, EMP comes through. Four members going to be caught. Immortality Field helping to keep Gushway alive for a little bit longer. Beam will come through as they eliminate that. Dora does manage to find one. And now we'll go ahead and use the Molten Core. Yeah, They're using everything. Down on the point, the turret gets rid of Libero. Say, Yobi's going to fall. They finally get rid of Adora, but at what cost? Look how many people have fallen on the side of NYXL. It's just going to be another flip back in favor of the Spark. Like, barely anything had ever happened. 14% is all NYXL get. 
Yeah, and Sashin gets to keep a large portion of this energy. He's going to be at like 45 or so when New York yeah, hits this next breath. push. And he's going to go up to 100 during the fight. Mono's going to primal. He's going to be able to bubble and keep targets alive. This is a really scary moment for NYXL because the EMP isn't there. And once the primal expires, which they're probably going to have to engage with, they're not going to have much in the way of keeping everyone alive through that grab. They probably have to pre-rally, honestly. I don't know if Anomo's yeah. going to do it. Okay, there it is. Yeah, Rally does come out as they approach towards the point to get rid of the turret. Just get rid of a little bit of that chip damage coming through. Looking for the pin. Gushu going to be stunned out of that one. A decent play here. So far as the Shatter gets dropped in, but doesn't find anything. So Yobi will get rid of Adora. And with a hack here on a God's Beat, this could be a potential turnaround for NYXL, who have since recapped the point. And this spark hit 99%. Mato got gets rid of Sashin. They need more than that. The recap is getting ready to come through. Godsby pushes around the corner, gets rid of Libero, dodges out on that self-destruct, and then goes right back over onto the ledge. Still continuing to take pot shots to break down the tanks of NYXL. Flashbang in stuns up Mono for a second, but the damage just isn't significant enough. He will be able to survive with the help of that nano boost, but now he's running lower and lower, and Godsby pushing forward fearlessly comes up with yet another kill. Flashbang around the side of the shield, stuns an ammo. Gets the kill, and Spark are looking for the flip. They're looking for the finish. 2-0. The EMP is comes out. out doesn't manages pair. to find five. The flip, however, is there for the Spark, and Godsby does not die. They keep him alive through all of the damage through the EMP, and no one can get to the point in time. And this is looking decisively one-sided for the Hangzhou Spark so far as they take Busan. Yeah, I mean, the EMP does not pair well with uh, Widowmaker, obviously. So you... <laughs> You kind of got this awkward situation you're in where, you know, you've got this EMP set up, but you've got to tag the point. You've got to try to win that longer fight. But Widow is obviously a glass cannon, can't get onto it. I don't think we'll be able to see more Zarya outside of control. We haven't really seen it from uh, any other teams because you need to run Ryan with it. You don't have verticality. You don't have that control over a lot of these points like Anubis we're coming up on. I feel like if any team, though, makes this work long-term throughout a series, um, I don't think it's going to happen on Anubis, but we move deeper into Gibraltar, for example. I think Hangzhou would be that team, based on what we've seen so far. Uh, very exciting start to this series. I think Hangzhou played that very well, and New York just yeah. kind of ran into a brick wall. Yeah, it was extremely clean from the Hangzhou spark. You know, slight back and forth, but NYXL were really not given much room to actually get the points locked down. I mean, collectively, just over 100% probably between the two rounds is what they netted for themselves. Uh, it's a really strong start for the Hangzhou Spark. We'll see if they can keep the wind in their seals, keep that ball rolling, or if NYXL can get the ball back in their court. When we come back for the break from map number two. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. Rank up with America's largest 5G network. Switch to T-Mobile today. And by State Farm. For auto, home, or renter's insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there.
The Overwatch League is brought to you by HyperX. Unleash your style, unleash your fury. With HyperX Fury Memory. All right, and here we go. We are just one map into our last series of the evening, of the morning, of the night, whatever it is for you. It's the morning for me. So it's very early and the sun is out. Every time you make but. me laugh like by saying stuff like that, I just run into my backdrop and almost knock it over. <laughs> I was like, like I just hit, hit with <laughs> And I was uh, just laughter. moving. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, Hangzhou Spark, they start off this series 1-0 with a very convincing, probably, I think, maybe one of the most convincing wins that we've had so far uh, today uh, on Busan, taking it 2-0. NYXL just couldn't really figure out what to do at all. It's hard when you're running the Sombra comp and you can't farm EMP off of uh, a Winston who's diving in or a D.Va who's you know either diving into you or also just kind of waiting to, to dive into D-Matrix. Um, those are the targets you can find where you're safe as a Sombra, where they can't just turn around and kill you if you start uh, trying to hack them or start trying to, to farm EMP charge off of them. They had a Zarya they were running into instead. That's very difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, Zarya can obviously like bubble herself. She can turn around and beam you down really easily. Um, there's a lot of things that, that make it difficult to farm EMP charge in that comp. You can't hit a Ryan as easily. You know, he can swing around and hammer you. It's really easy to spy check with both of those heroes. Um, and, you know, then also IDK's rallies were really good. As we head into yeah. Temple of Anubis, which is our, our next map, I don't think they can run the Zarya here. Maybe on defense, like that's a really, uh, that's a really big stretch, I think, to try to run that. But what I'm trying to say is I don't know if that strategy will work again because I don't think they can use it again. And I think New York definitely has a great chance to bounce back as we head into these different map types. And I know I say that a lot after Control, you and I both are like, well, it's Control, you never know. But I, I truly believe that running the Zarya here is just the lack of mobility is going to give you problems alone. I mean, they're showing it, but they're also showing Gushway with a D.Va, so there's definitely a lot of room for uh, for change as far yeah. as its composition is concerned. So <laughs> sure. we'll, we'll see what they land on finally, but I, I think the one thing that is looking pretty certain is going to be Godspeed with this McCree. This guy has been incredible throughout his entire career. Kind of uh, kind of slinked by, I, I think, you know, in his debut season, in you know, last season, 2019. Oh, certainly. But uh, Zarya, right now, sure. he is definitely getting some added attention, some very well-deserved attention in this series by just uh, slapping people. By the way, they are running the Zarya. Okay. Uh, I really didn't think they were going to commit to this. It is scouted very early by Sabiolbi, but again, attacker's advantage. You don't have time to change comp. Immortality Field is baited early, so that's a nice advantage that New York is able to get. And coming through this choke point, even if you have a comp like this, it's just so difficult to do. So Hangzhou Spark, step one, you know, mess up your opponent's comp, run the Zarya, but step two, how do you close the gap to the point and take a good team fight there? Well, they get the boot back on the mono as he tries to jump up on the high ground and contest them. Bebe was the a but a door. Yeah, finds a headshot. On to Libero, was splitting away already across the walkway. And this is IDK way over onto the point. On, on Lucio, by the way, not going to be running the Brigida this time. He's just getting that extra speed to help close the gap to the point. Yeah, you're talking about limited mobility with this Aria, so looking to solve it as Sashin is going to be messing up his jump path there. Uh, looks like he might be going for it yet again to try to get up onto the high ground, but in the meantime, he is not building up any energy whatsoever. We'll get a little bit of pressure applied to him, but still holding on to that bubble. Wants to try and mitigate something a little bit more meaningful. See the Ant Matrix toss down here onto the, the mid-ground. As the jump comes through, Nano Boost used onto Mono. As they top him back up, Flashbang gets the stun Great there for Matrix. the moment, but they, they cannot pressure him well enough to actually knock him out. See, Gobi takes a couple shots from that fan the Hammer, forces him down below half HP, and does have to peel back. Now it's going to be the Deadeye pulled out looking for a target. They get the break on the barrier. He's looking for Mono, but he will go ahead, leap back into the Mega Pack room to try and stay alive. Mono's still going to be chunked out down to half HP and save Yopi. Falling low again. Uses the EMP, but then gets eliminated immediately after as so he's out of the fight. The sound barrier comes through from IDK, and Gonsby is just clicking on people right now. The pin comes through. The barrier allows him to survive for a little bit longer. 
But he does get eliminated at the end of the day, but so much work has been done by the rest of the members of the Hangzhou Spark. They're currently ticking up. They get the first one for free. Gonsby now swapping over onto the Widowmaker to rejoin, sit on top of that archway, and snipe anyone who tries to contest the point. Uh, he's going to have such a good opportunity to kill Libero early if Libero does commit in. IDK healed an eye there, actually stops him. They are actually caught here. This could be a big turnaround. Now Adora going to fall as well. We will see Hotbot knocked out of the Mac. Which we're playing forward, shuts down that baby diva. As Godsby looks for a snipe, barely misses the shot there. On to Sebiobi's head, who is able to come back in and finish off Sasha. Now Gushwe taken down as well as he tries to exit. Godsby continues to look for these shots, but just isn't really able to find them. So does he stick with this Widow, or does he just go straight back and swap over onto the McCree? I think it's going to be the I latter. Think has to, I think, yeah, he has to swap. I think that's this, extra time lost. Yeah, this is it, by the way, though. This is the comp. This is the non-mirror that you can run on this map. I mean, sure, they don't get it in the end, but the execution was crisp. 99.5 is 0.5% away from actually having an insane time bank. They've got a grab now. Quick match. And, you know, I mean, this, like, this strategy is so well executed, and it makes you wonder why no one else is running this right now. Uh, loving what we're seeing so far. Even the turret placement denying that last EMP from Sabiobi. But New York are doing a great job of ignoring these bubbles, not giving Sajin that energy that he needs to really plow through this point. They want to force a fight on the point if they can, but not at 10 energy. Something strike comes through, Hoppa unable to find a pick. Turk going to be finished off, Sajin taking a nap, has that grab online, but no one can get on top of him to try to finish him off. So we'll be able to stand back up. Flashbang in, gets the shot on Libero. Fantastic routing here from Godsby. It's just always pretty much where he needs to be, except for that moment there where he does get taken down. But the rest of the team collapses. They get the kills, and they will get that three-minute bump up. And they've got a couple ultimates to tool around with to try and take this. Yeah, I, it's it's like, it's it's not GOATS, what we're seeing from Hangzhou, obviously, but it's it's really interesting. I mean, they're, they're rotating around as one with occasional flanks from Godsby. They've got all the right counter heroes to what New York is running. They don't have a sound barrier, though, for this fight. And I don't know if New York's necessarily going to need it with Godsby out of the picture. Honestly, getting the pick here on the Godsby means that Spark likely don't want to commit to too much here. The EMP might not come through, so IDK will be able to get that sound barrier online in time. Libero got the duplicate there onto Gushue, becoming a Reinhardt. Sound barrier comes through, but a lot of that shielding gone right off the bat. Only Sashin having any residual shielding from that beat. And I now he's going to be first... losing out on all that energy. I think this is the first real, like, macro error we've seen from Hangzhou uh, throughout the first two maps. This is the first real mistake, like, big mistake, where they moved in too quickly, they overcommitted there, Sound Barrier comes in too fast, even though they know EMP's there, they got caught between a rock and a hard place, I think they panicked a little bit with the time Ooh. bank. Godsby's picked again here, IDK swaps over to the Brigida, and you can build a rally in a minute 40, but only if you keep fighting consistently, which is exactly what New York wants. And suddenly, for the first time, and I feel like in this, you know, obviously only two maps so far series, Hangzhou looked vulnerable. This comp looks beatable, even though it's, quote unquote, the counter comp of what New York is running. New York is playing this patiently, and they're taking a lot of these fights and flank angles that are forcing Hangzhou to not be able to fight where they want to, which is on the point where Zarya is going to get value, going to get that energy. It's being a value, Libero getting so much off these sticky bombs, constantly chunking Bebe down to half HP, just by sticking it to somebody else who's standing next to him. Here's the energy, 75. It is building it up. Turret's gonna be gone. Molten core used, but does manage to find an ammo. Takes him down, Gushue, sliver of HP, trying to stay alive, and Godsby, with that dead eye, will manage to get rid of the scientist. Flashbang goes into Libero's shield as he gets the copy yet again here onto Gushue. Tries to go around the corner, tries to drop the hammer, but will just get pinned by Libero. A huge shutdown. You're on to Gushue's ultimate now with 35 seconds remaining and no ults in the bank other than a rally getting ready to come up. Things start looking this is like extremely dire. You, you have to stay in fight, but you don't want to because you don't have the comp you want, or you don't have the, the whole team for this comp. Yeah. EMP connects on to five. The sleep dart was there on the Godsby, so no chance to even just click some heads to try and turn things around. Sashin does manage to take down Libero and Gushue. Going to be hacked as he comes back through, but just will hold down left click and get rid of Sebiobi. Sashin high the energy ball again. As well, however, does manage to find two. Sashin, high energy as you say, pinned into the corner. 
They need to get their way over onto the point. Somebody's going to be delaying here for the moment. That's Gushui trying to buy some time. Mono gets rid of that Mega Pack to make sure that Gushui cannot use it. Sashin has the grab online. Uses it over onto the corner. Mono will get locked up, but has not been taken down yet. Still does manage to survive now. Sashin going to be gone. Bebe eliminated as well, and it seems like this is just going to be a matter of time killing them off one after the other as they string forward onto the point. They will be able to successfully defend point B here. Now Zen YXL, they give over no percentage whatsoever. That's a that's one of those catch-22 moments as the spark where you lose two members when you're about to push onto the point with the comp that you know has to fight on the point where you've got Azaria who's at you know 55 to 70 energy, where you're not you're not like off the charts where you could walk in and carry a team fight, but you're also not. This is the pick I'm talking about here. Where you pointed out Libro just swaps over, jumps in, has the charge kill, pins out of the immortality field as it dies. It's the second shatter. Yeah. Doesn't end up mattering, but now you're here, right? And it's actually only one dead as the spark, but you are you have this comp that needs to have everyone together to push through and fight, and you need to have this death ball, this phalanx-esque composition that has, gets 100 energy and blows up the point, right? But you can't leave either because you're not mobile. So you're, you're caught between the rock and a hard place. You can't stay and fight perfectly the way your comp is designed to, but you only have 38 seconds. Can you leave? You can't leave either, and... So you have to try to take a scrappy fight and as best as they could, they still just didn't have the staying power to, to get enough kills and close out even a single tick. But yeah, I think you're kind of alluding to composition change here with your ooh earlier. Yeah, I mean, as you know, most people who watch the Overwatch League and especially when we're casting know, I'm a big fan of Ash. And yeah, a big I'm fan of Godsby. <laughs> a big fan of Godsby, and I was one of the, the main people who was you know, having an outcry of this guy needs to be in the Overwatch League in 2019. And now I'm getting both. I just hope it's good. <laughs> hey, you want a contender's title, you know, I mean. That, uh, that one was almost borderline illegitimate for <laughs> <laughs> But uh, no, it's true. He does have that trophy. But uh, we'll see how he fares now with the Ash sitting up here on the high ground. Bionate still there on the Sashin, finally going to be expiring as he is on the Sigma. Fedora getting stunned up, but it's that armor back, and the girl almost gets his head taken off. This is, again, a pretty unique take from Hangzhou. Reinhardt Sigma. It's a different double shield. No Orisa in the pool this week. Obviously, you know, there's not as much staying power for Ryan, but he has pin potential. Amount of pressure being applied here. Libero going to be taken down. Godfrey finds that headshot. Gushue, Bionade will expire on him. They had the immortality field just for good measure. So we'll be able to stay safe. So the first volley held off here by the Hangzhou Spark as Godsby continues to just farm and try to get that bob ready to go. I mean, he's doing a great job. Nano boost out in this fight yep. very early. Mono's bashed away. Going to have yeah, to... Jonak does use it. Ant Matrix used as well by Bebe. So he's hiding out around the corner for now. Waiting for that ultimate to expire. Not a great situation here for New York uh, with that early nano. Libero as well taking so much turret damage. So he's going to be close to having that EMP. He can shut down the bob with that. So he looks for the shots there on the Jonak. He can't quite find it. Somebody's got to heal gods, but he's been sitting at 91 HP for far too long right now. There we go. Finally, we'll start topping him up as Sabiobi does get picked off. Jonak avoiding so many shots here with that stutter stepping. Finally going to get shot here, but say Bilby needs to come back with EMP. He's so late in Ooh. the fight. Yeah, Immortality Field went out, but it doesn't matter, I believe. Here is Bebe and IDK both got finished off. The Lava does manage to find Mono with the Fire Strike from Libra, who turns into yet another Reinhardt. Gets rid of Godsby. Anyway, a lot of pressure. Now the Shatter dropped in. Libero is the best Reinhardt on his team, it would appear. This guy is just popping off with this pick. Obviously getting the Shatters uh, super quickly because that's the kit. But uh, that is going to be the cap here on point A for NYXL. So they four and a half keep... minutes now to take a single tick. Yeah, and they get to keep the EMP too, which means that uh, one of the best tools that Hangzhou has left, this uh, rally, is probably going to have to be pre-rallied. But with 420 on the clock and it's only a tick, like if you pre-rally and then New York just sits there and waits and then goes for the EMP afterwards, you just lose. So you've got to be so careful with that rally timing. IDK is going to have to make it happen. He does hit that EMP first. Yeah, EMP gets to the Bionade goes on to both of the tanks. Hotball with the self truck gets rid of IDK, and that takes that rally out of the fight. Davidic Flux will come through. 
Slams him back down. Cretion stun leads to Anamo getting eliminated, but Lara with the beam gets for the Bebe. Now Adora falling to save Yobi as well. They are already so close to getting this tick, and Gushui under fire pulls down below half HP. Another huge Bionade comes out from Jonak, hitting onto two. Shield gets raised as Gushui desperately tries to stave off Libero, but he just cannot do it, so. Ziggy Bombs take him out, but Godsby gets back in kind, gets the follow up headshot onto Jonak, and they will actually be able to hold them off. Yeah. That was looking so done. This is really interesting, too. Hangzhou running this Sigma and finding success with it uh, in the face of EMPs. You know, IDK gets to rally off eventually after resetting. They stalled quite well. And now they have an ult advantage. So, Bilby's going to take quite a bit of time to build another EMP. He should be able to get that way faster than IDK is already significantly ahead, obviously. But an EMP isn't a guaranteed team fight win, but it's the best opening tool that New York's got. Libero also going to have that duplicate. So this is one of those slow pushes, those ult pushes, where you try to build the ults, the um, eco pushes, as we pointed yeah. back in Apex. And then the next fight is the one that you're really looking to tie up the series with. You can see New York is just poking, not over committing. Well, that will be the Ant Matrix used. Primal Rage is there from Mono. Yet another, <laughs> another duplicate over on the Reinhardt. The Molten Core will go ahead and take him out of that duplicate ultimate, but not before he gets that kill onto Sasha. So still excellently done. Constantly coming up with value is Libero every time he pops that ultimate. Nearly gets picked off though, manages to make it around the other side of the tomb away from Godsby's line of sight. So it does not get taken out of the skies, but Sasha left out to dry, does get eliminated on the far side of the point by Sapiolbi. He'll be respawning quickly, however, and will have that ult ready to go. So coming back into the fight does have the fuck, but they're off the point! Yeah, they're not able to get back on. Oh, no, no, no! They got caught in half there. You have to, I mean, you have to give credit to, say, Bielby in New York there, because even though, sure, they, they couldn't touch the point and theoretically someone should have stayed and touched, uh, that was their best shot of avoiding the EMP. Godsby rolls back and they're setting up for a re-engage, but it's only one tick, and I think in that moment, Hangzhou Spark forgot just how mortal they were uh, because those last few fights were going so well and they were like, oh, we have so many tools to solve. It wasn't even a good EMP. Like, we all avoided it, but because they avoided it, uh, New York gets positioned to uh, take the point and take the map and bring us to a 1-1 series. This is a pretty cool one so far, I, I have to say. We're seeing Hangzhou Spark kind of test the limits of how far you can go away from the norm and what is, you know, or what's becoming the norm in our new week of uh, hero pool play. Yeah, well, tied up 1-1 one, one here at the first half, so uh, it's anybody's game. You know, have to see who is going to be able to take the lead, but before we get to map number three, we are going to be having our, our... My mind just brain farted because of the, uh, the you know, them getting off of the point. Our We're going to have a halftime break. We're going to have a game break coming up in just a few minutes, so stay tuned. There we go. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Zipchair Gaming. The official chair supplier of the Overwatch League.
All righty, and welcome back. It is time for our game break. I, that's right, I remember what it's called this time. I had a moment to, to sit back and think about everything that had just happened at the end of that Temple of Anubis round. Our game break presented by Pringles Wavy. And I, already a very interesting series. This is what we wanted, Wolf. This is what we were very much c keeping our fingers crossed for uh, as we were introducing the rosters. And so far, they're delivering on it. I think the coolest thing about this series, too, is that it's not just um, a Wolf. mirror matchup. Oh, I'm muted on it. You get the gas. You're muted, in, but you you're can't. You're muted, Wolf. I, I wasn't muted you. in. I wasn't muted in. Uh, in the stream, but I was muted okay. in real life. So the, if that makes so the sense. stream heard you. I just couldn't yeah. hear you. So I have so no I was, idea what yeah, you said. Sorry, my bad. I pressed the wrong. I imagine hotkey. that you said nothing but wonderful things about me and our friendship. Well, I really just said the cool thing about it is it's not a mirror matchup the whole time. Um, okay, we're seeing different compositions from Hangzhou, which is what I, I was going to get into a little bit uh, in our okay. crunch time presented by Pringles Wavy. Well, let's just do it right now. Uh, yeah. So let's uh, let's talk about that in our, our crunch time presented by Pringles Wavy. I want to talk about the Reinhardt Zarya comp that we're seeing. They, they ran it on Anubis on attack. We saw, um, you know, I think some moments of brilliance with it. We saw success with it on A. It was very well executed. Um, the Reinhardt, you know, something that you don't see all too often right now. Mm -hmm. Partially because, I, I think a lot of people aren't really thinking about this, partially because Reinhardt can be so detrimental when your opponent duplicates a Reinhardt, as we saw several times yes. throughout yeah. that series from Libero. And a lot of coaches have been talking about this. A lot of players have talked about this. You know, ZP brought it up when I cast, you know, Echo's first uh, pro games with him a few weeks ago. It's just the fact that Reinhardt can, like, if you have Echo, Reinhardt can basically teleport into the back of the team. Like, Reinhardt can fly and then suddenly can hit a pin, swing once, and then have an Earth Shatter in a place where Reinhardt should never be able to get to in a normal situation. So... I think that's yeah. part of the reason why uh, NYXL is finding so many pins with Libero, so much success, is just because Echo allows that. So I thought that maybe the Zarya pick was actually going to be what gave them trouble. Is how do you get Zarya into these right spots? How do you get Zarya up to the right amount of energy? Can you find value with Grav and all of these team fights? It's actually, I think, the Reinhardt that's really causing them more problems, and not because of their mistakes or because of the hero's lack of mobility, but because of Echo and because Libero can clone the Reinhardt in so many of these situations. So... Just some food for thought uh, as yeah. we move forward into this, uh, what looks like it could be a really, really good and, and longer series. And that food is Pringles Wavy, of course, for your yeah. thought. All right, goodbye. Go. That's that's all I got. All right, guys, we'll see you. That's it for our game break presented by Pringles Wavy. And we'll see you for map number three coming up right in a bit. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Pringles Wavy. Big crunch, big flavor.
All righty, it is time for map number three in this series. We're currently tied up one to one between NYXL and the Hangzhou Spark. So anybody's game right now. Honestly, both teams have been playing extremely well. Forced off the point at the end of Temple of Nubis where the Hangzhou Spark could not recontest. That single tick comes through. NYXL, they give us this tie. So this could go either way. We just have to see who can put the right foot forward here for map number three. Yeah, I mean, Gibraltar, I think, is a map where uh, if Hangzhou want to keep running this Reinhardt Zarya, I think you're going to have a lot of success with that, actually, on A, and then into B, it becomes a little bit more difficult, but you certainly can um, find that level of success if you're running the McCree to shut down the Echo that we're seeing on the other side, shut down Libero's ability to find damage and get those fast duplicates. So I I think Hangzhou's going to keep running this. I really didn't think they would when we went into Anubis, but the fact that they kept running it on Anubis leads me to believe that they're going to try to force this on Gibraltar as well. And on attack, especially, is where they're going to find so much success with that. You force New York to come down to your level. You force them onto the cart. Um, it, it's a really cool strategy. And I do uh, I do like how it's panning out. Like, I, if you showed me this, if you, like, took a screenshot of Hangzhou's comp at the beginning, I would look at it and say, oh, that's interesting. But I wouldn't have had a lot of confidence about it uh, heading into a series like this, especially against a New York Excelsior that's looking very dominant right now. But... The execution is what makes it unique and what makes it why only Hangzhou is doing this, I think. And I, I think other teams should probably pick up on this, too. Um, it's easier to execute, I think, than it looks. But if you practice it for even maybe one or two scrim blocks, I think you could have a serviceable, uh, you know, Reinhardt, Zarya, <laughs> Brigida comp. Mm -hmm. They're going to be on attack first here. Hangzhou is, actually, so... Let's see if they run it. So far, it doesn't look like it, but, you know, it's attack, so anything goes. Looks like just going to be that opening hook opportunity on the walkway to try and find somebody. But no, okay, not even going to play around with that one. Sasha's oh. just going to be going over on it to Zadiva. Oh, with I want to learn more. Pushing forward. Ooh, that was a scary position to be in right there. But the Matrix was out to protect him. Dora. Scary when Echo is threatening Stop. Widow has cover. <laughs> I Those sticky bombs do a significant amount of damage. Yeah. Be genuinely very careful around those. It and puts we, you into you know, a we range. Bebe. Yeah, we kept seeing Bebe getting chunked out by them. But Godsby pushing forward, looking for the shot. Gets a Bonnie tag there onto Libero. This is such a unique composition from Hangzhou as well. It's not that unlike what we saw from Seoul with the Widow Genji, but it's on attack, and it's obviously with Echo instead, so you have a, some a range of motion, but you have much more safety, I think, as the Echo here because of your ability to kind of poke at range. A hack on the Sasha, but the beam comes through. Adora managing to knock Hotba out of the mech, but Mono finds Godsby. Now Libero and Jonak both going to be gone though, so this is just looking like a point A take. Pretty much straight up from there. Uh, Sebiolbi's doing his damnedest to try to turn this around, however. Does manage to find two. Mono comes back in. Now gets rid of Bebe, who was just very close to that transcendence. Which way trying to find a kill, but he himself falling low will get finished off. And yeah, just like that, NYXL on the back of those two kills from Sebiolbi, they managed to find the fight. Hapa is playing out of his mind. We haven't really talked about him too much this series, but he's played... He, he's had such a great D.Va. His defense matrixes have been amazing. He's also had really clutch fights. He's filling the kill feed, which, you know, and you can see it in his ult meter. He's building those so fast. Well, EMP from Zabiobi going to be very good. Bebe 3% yeah, is... away from Trance. Yeah, I mean, even so, this is probably the fight that you just... You, know, you want to get done with, say, okay, move in, we'll get EMP'd, we'll die, we'll go back in now with nearly six ultimates ready to go and try to win the fight from here. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, it's the fight you want to just burn their EMP by walking into it type of fight. Didn't have to if they had trance, but when you have to, when your opponent's EMP before you can touch the card, I mean, this is probably best case scenario for Hangzhou Spark. God's be sticking with this Widow. It's not going to get line of sight here. The cart's yeah. rolling. It's going to force New York to come to them. We are 
not moving it forward right now. Shot through, tags Libero, has the health pack to stay safe. God's being just gonna be dead. The beam is there from Libero, they finish him off. Adora burning that duplicate, does manage to get the primal rage out on his Winston. Shield block there from Libero, who's duplicated IDK. The is getting killed, or at least knocked out of that by that self destruct. So now it's gonna be swinging around, offering up a hell of a lot of AoE healing coming through. Given the double Brigitte's bomb down in the back in the car wash, will not find any kills. Bebe still holds on to that transcendence as Sapiobi gets closer to that next EMP, but they need to get some progress here. They are so very close to closing out this push onto A, but they've only got 40 seconds left, so if they don't win this fight, then that is it. That's a full hold. Yeah, and it's looking like we might just live in that reality here. Achilles, the Godsby swap here is so late. Building an EMP is is almost out of the question. It wouldn't be in, in a lot of other situations, but because of Hangzhou's Spark's position is so bad, he can't even poke, he can't even farm that. And Back oh door. no, Bebe is dead. Back door. Bebe does get taken down. Cart still rolling back. Godsby just now healing himself up as the Mega Pack gets hacked here by Sebiolbi. Hey, Bebe's so not here for trance yet. Yeah, they're going to have to get that contest on the cart pretty soon here, but Sebiolbi pole position to go ahead and shut them down. He's he just going to in the back line. He'll drop down. They force the trance. OT starting to bleed away. Somebody's got to touch the cart. They finally managed to do so. Sashin going to be stunned up. Knocked out of the mech very quickly. Kushway uses that primal rage, but has the Discord Orb out from Jonak on top of him. He's getting shredded down below half HP as they try to keep him alive. Rally comes through from IDK. Getting armored up. Manages to stay alive for a little bit. Look how far back he is away from the rest of his squad and just gets chunked down that try shot, doing so much damage from Libero. Jonak now finds one, Adora going to be eliminated before he can duplicate anybody. The bomb up over the top from Hotba is the icing on the cake. And that will just be it. Full hold here at the hands of NYXL, completely shutting down Hangzhou Spark, who frankly stayed way too long on the Widowmaker. And this feels really reminiscent of what we saw from Seoul. Obviously, not exactly the same thing, but it's a composition that they stayed on way too long. The execution didn't seem very crisp. It felt very, uh, it felt like they had an idea with the comp and Godspeed was gonna help shut down Libero, who's been kind of the bane of their existence. They decided they weren't gonna have uh, the ability to run Zarya here. They weren't confident in that, which is what I really thought we would see. I thought they were gonna stick with it. And I thought this was gonna be a great part of, uh, of this map, especially A, to where that was gonna find success. but. As you say, the late swap back to Sombra just means you're, you've are you kind of lapped, you've given Sabilby the ability to lap you in EMP charge. He's going to have the better EMPs, he's going to have the faster ones. And you've kind of set yourself up to play with one hand tied behind your back. You either crush that first push with the Widowmaker, shock your opponent, and and defeat them before they get ults, or you don't, and then you've got to swap faster. They, they tried for basically two more pushes after the first one with Gods Beyond Widow, and you know, the ability to surprise your opponent and have that, that X factor of the Widow just falls apart very quickly. On defense, they're going to run Adora on Torbjorn once again. No Zarya, it's going to be the Sigma setup we saw on Hanamura, or excuse me, on uh, Anubis. It's been a long night of casting. We'll see if they can find success with this as New York is going to scout this out early. Libero will swap. Yep. Just going to move right over onto the Echo. I mean, this could be an incredibly fast map of Gibraltar. Miss Hangzhou can also, you know, pull off the fuller hold as we often call it. Fire strike through. It's a smattering of damage, but he'll get topped up pretty quickly. Okay, right now, the position here for New York Excelsior, not amazing, but they actually are able to rejoin Pretty much everybody together. They got cut apart uh, in half for a second there, but they get to rejoin. You can see the gods be, you know, starting off on this Umbra, having that defensive advantage in the, this position here in the underpass is netting him a lot of ult charge. He's at 61% compared to the 29 Mono of Sabiobi, so that's Mono's, a big hope for them. Yeah, not to cut you off, but Mono's so far away, I feel like Hangzhou need to capitalize on this moment. He actually just gets away scot-free, despite being insanely far away from the rest of his team. And out of line of sight of Anamo and Jonak. And Hangzhou, you know, I mean, sure, they build up that extra EMP charge. They need this to be a really great EMP fight. Oh. Now they lose out on Adora. Get 
of that turret as well, so he can't do anything from beyond the grave. Gonsby will manage to find Jonek, however, without using the EMP, so that's going to be a very crucial pickoff, further delaying. That transcend is coming through, and he's just going to go ahead and toss out that EMP. Libero will find one, but now Mono going to fall. They're looking for a little bit more. Nano boost in onto Libero, who nearly has that duplicate ready to go. Gravitic Bucks invested he's as well, get but it. he gets a duplicate <laughs> off on the Libero. And now it's just going to be you know, a battle of these barriers coming through. But Adora arrives to try to equalize things out a little bit here for the rest of his squad. Beam coming in. Adora is going to be burned uh, down. Libero is an absolute bad man. He is destroying everybody. Got to oh, be finally that, shut that just down. Won the map. But that just yeah. won them the map. Yeah. GG on that crushed. one. GR oh in the old gosh. chat, please. What a player. He's insanely low. He's got the nano. He survives. Gets the kill. Gets the transformation. I, this has killed to be. Killed in transformation. Sur uh, obviously survives after that. Oh, they walk back out. The EMP hits five. They have the window rolling, though. Offering up a bit of damage. Maybe it manages to find Jonak and save Yolby is dead. So 6v4 advantage with Mono. Hacked in the primal range and now finished off. So maybe we're not done yet. They get Guess three not. meters away. With a minute and 22 seconds remaining as Libero is the last one to fall. Jonex and got Transcendence. They have a self-destruct, but that's about it. The crazy thing about this, too, is because, like, when I first saw Libero use that ult, I had I had my reservations about how effective it was going to be. When he ended up filling the kill and getting four kills, I thought, okay, that's the end of the map. But now Hangzhou has EMP here. Yep. And New York, Which you know, they've got a trance to counter it. But if things go badly here, we could see a total reversal. Did not expect this. Certainly did not. Beam going to be used a little bit early. Doesn't have the execute range to take down Sashin. Gushway going to be hacked, so has to peel back. Goes into the side room. IDK finished off. Mortality field going to be eliminated. Now Bebe is out of the fight as well, so there are no supports here for the side of the Hangzhou Spark. Gushway drops in the shatter, but doesn't find anything. The fire strike will get rid of the enemy Ana, but now it's just Sashin playing forward alongside Adora, trying to buy some time. Self-destruct comes in, the stun's there on the Godsby. They shut him down, IDK re-arriving on the Lucio, just cannot last long enough, and they will be able to glide in for that victory. I, you know, bit of a palpitation uh, being given over to NYXL, I would think there by the Hangzhou Spark, managing to hold them off for a little bit longer, but not long enough to go ahead and pick up that win to get that fuller hold, but Man, Libero, he is making such a strong case already in these first three maps for player of the uh, for player I mean, of the match. If he if uh, they win it, I mean he's going to get it. Uh, he's 100%. got he's pretty much got to. He just smack slapped the taste out of everybody's mouth on the I side mean, of Hangzhou. Uh, Spark ultimately, for that play. at the end of the day, like that play still won them the map. Hangzhou had ults that they could use to try to retake. They won a team fight there, but they had to kind of scramble for it, right? And New York always yeah. had that threatening win condition, even with a small time bank of just winning a trance fight and taking it, which is what, you know, at the end of the day actually happened. So Libero took an insane risk there, and so did Jonak, right? Jonak actually nano-boosted him, um, yeah. and then he was hacked. So even though he, he got his ultimate, he couldn't use it right away. He played a little bit more passively for just a moment, gets his ultimate off, duels Sashin there at, in duplication, and then is able to escape and help clean the kill feed while everyone else around him <laughs> rejoins. That was an insane play. Yeah. And we're seeing more and more of these out of Libero. It makes you wonder why Who Are You was ever playing the Echo <laughs> for NYXL right now with I, how good Libero is. I don't know. Libero has certainly proved himself, though, uh, here today. Just absolutely phenomenal thus far. We're not done yet, however. NYXL, they do move up 2-1. They have match point. But Hangzhou Spark, they're going to be hungry to get that clap back, to get that win on the board, tie us up again, and force a game five. We're going to find out if they can do just that when we come back from the break. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. Rank up with America's largest 5G network. Switch to T-Mobile today.
Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. Alrighty, and here we go, coming back for what could be the final map of this series, but, I, you know, without any bias, without rooting for anybody to win this, I'm hoping that it is not. I'm hoping that we go to a game five from there. I don't care what happens, I don't care who wins, I just want to see more between these two teams, because there has been some very significant back and forth. Uh, obviously, Gibraltar, a little bit of a shutout there from Hangzhou Spark, but still some really strong moments on that defense. Well, we're going to get a pretty unique hybrid map in our first of the night in Blizzard World yeah. uh, coming up next. So we're going to see something completely different. Um, just from an academic perspective, I really wanted to see Zarya on Gibraltar from Hangzhou Spark just because I wanted to see how it would play out and how mm -hmm. it would do versus the Sombra Echo. But they didn't play it. They played some you know, weird Widowmaker and still almost were able to get the defense there of A, the Fuller Hold, as, as you and I coined it. But... It doesn't happen at the end of the day. Blizzard World, another map where we could see the Zarya. I mean, it's pretty straightforward as the attackers. You yep. know, you go straight from a spawn to A with the Zarya, um, and you can push your way to the point and force that fight. But at the same time, there's a lot of open space, so Echo is quite strong, and you can chip down a lot of the members of Hangzhou Spark on their way there if they are going to be running that Zarya. So, uh, you know, I don't know if they'll do it. I wanted to say yes, you know, looking at the map list after our first two maps, I thought, okay, we're going to see it all four maps. But after the last map, it's hard to say. And they are going to be attacking first. Ready. And uh, I do want to point out, we pointed it out, actually, I believe it was with Boston the other day, but it is pretty rare to see a team that loses choose attack first. Oh, they're not going to be attacking first. That was just wrong. Yeah, they're <laughs> they did. They did attack first on the previous map, so I was like, "Hmm," but uh, not in this. Not in this case. Yeah. If they did it twice in a row, I'm like, "Okay, maybe there's something going on with this." But oh, just the UI throwing me off. Even though I could have easily just looked down at the screen and, and known the, earlier the colors, that wasn't happening. You know, and seeing yeah. all of the pink players running forward to go and get into defensive positions. It's not fair. The attackers spawn on the point. That and the defenders are in the spawn. <laughs> right, it is going to go. not be Zarya for the defense, um, obviously, as everyone knows now. But for NYXL, they're going to be mirroring this. So we're just going back to week 15 meta. Echo Sombra. Yep, just going to be set up here on that forward high ground to get some shots for the camp. Forward try shots continuing to fly here from Libero. Fine. Some decent damage. They have a hack into this court orb onto Gushwang. So they try to keep him alive. Seems like they will be able to sustain him for a, at least a little bit longer as Adora instead is going to be the target of the Discord orb. Constantly shifting here. Uh, with those targets is Jonak. But NYXL overall making their way over onto the point. Starting to contest that one. And starting to tick up. Seems like they will just be getting some of this point for free as Angcho Spark struggling with some low HP bars. So a second tick now going to be snatched up. When will they step forward? Finally do start blocking that one off. Nano boost is available. It's going to be invested. This one's going to be going over onto Adora up in the sky. But the target's low enough to beam down. Rally nearly available as well for Anamo. going to have that online. Instantly pops it. Get everybody armored up as they try to stay alive and just go ahead and take this off the bat. EMP coming through. Manages to catch four. And that should just about do it. It will. Just yeah, over five is... minutes now for the Streets phase. This is one of those rare cases where the attacking Sombra just beats the defending Sombra in terms of EMP build time. The execution is really nice for New York, and they're able to get that EMP off before IDK can react, before Godspeed can have his own. And Godspeed kind of dies with his EMP there. And this is an insane time bake now for New York Excelsior, who are really only missing their own EMP because they didn't have to use Trance in that fight, too. They can shut down Hangzhou's next one. The, I mean, the momentum can't be overstated here for New York right now. They've got all the tools. Some not in the toolbox, even. They've got all the tools. They've got the tools from a secondary toolbox. Oh, damn. They're kitted out, then. Yeah. Four ults. They've got a whole Ready Home Depot, go. all right? <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Bebe gonna be picked off. That's uh, definitely not a good start to the fight. Gonsby still using the EMP. Hot Jonak so denies any chance of a transcendence coming through, but doesn't even kill him off with the shielding gone. So can't follow up for that, and then things are starting to really unravel for the Hangzhou Spark. Adora pushing forward. Does have that Primal Rage ready to go. Will pop it. Try to knock them back up the street closer towards his teammate. Transcendent still going to be used by Jonak. We will see that duplicate expire now for Adora. Goes back into his natural Echo form. Actual Primal Rage going to be used by Gushway. Beam coming through. Barely gets out range. Gushway barely survives as he drops back down around the corner with the rest of his squad. Yeah, it's not over yet. Hangzhou hanging on here. Gonsby just narrowly ahead right now in his next EMP, and this is going to be really important because Jonak obviously had to use that trance just moments ago. So there's this window where Hangzhou can win this fight. If they play it aggressively, they have to step forward, though. They have to take the fight to New York. Rallies out for Anamo. Which way? Yep, it's going to be burned down. Sajin has to use that self destruct to try to make his way back into the mech. Gonsby does manage to find Sabiobi, get the better of him. But the card is still advancing in the meantime. Great hack there. Comes forward with the Discord Orb out from Bebe, so Mono does not stand a chance. And this is the pushback here for the Hangzhou Spark, shoving NYXL off that cart yet again. This they is get the so big... very close to closing out B, though. Yeah, this is the big pendulum swing, though, because the closer you get to B, no. the longer you have on the respawns, or rather on the runbacks with respawn, and yeah, it does survive there. I cannot insane. believe it. But look, I mean, Hangzhou now has Trance. They have their own rally, and they've got positional advantage here. Say Bilby trying to find the perfect EMP, wants to hit Bebe, and he's in it at the right angle to do so. That or at least just hack him. Sees the translocator there. He might have taken that one away. We will see Libero using his duplicate on Godsby. So there's two Sombras in the fight about to have two EMPs at the ready. Libero falling lower and lower. EMP will come out. Now Say Yobi going to be using his on the back end, trying to get that maximum coverage. But Bebe, despite there being two EMPs to worry about, still does manage to get that transcendence off. Godspeed. Adora, however, cannot survive through that self-destruct. So Hotba Hot finds one. Godspeed with his EMP manages to catch five. But he's going to be the first one that dies in the fight. Libero turning things around, takes him down. Now Bebe going to be hacked, IDK eliminated. And that'll just be the cleanup and the push forward into B. It's a good time by overall for the Hangzhou Spark. They drained the clock significantly. Oh, you know, so five minutes down, but so unlucky still too to with Godsby. He EMP'd right after uh, Mono had hit his primal rage, so wasn't able to deny that. And Bebe as well with the perfect transcends during the animation of Say Biobi's EMP. It was on top of Bebe, but Bebe still is able to react quickly enough and hit that trance. And they had everything going for them, but New York still prevail. And now, you know, this is a respectable time make potentially for New York Excelsior. But the game is kind of reset in terms of ult economy right now. Both teams very even. This neutral fight is going to determine who gets that extra edge. And right now, Libero is actually looking for a yeah. pick. The EMP and the, the Transcendent is going to be two of the bigger ones here uh, in favor of the NYXL as Jonek has that ult online. Save Yobi gets hacked by Godsby. Godsby falls dangerously low and Save Yobi is kept alive. Libero to move up there onto that high ground, wrapping around, using that extra move speed from the flight to get out of sticky situations. And now he can wait, be patient, and get ready to duplicate, in all likelihood, on Gushway. Double struck, however, finds Mono, so that's likely going to have to be a reset here for Advice. Yeah, his barrier was uh, broken and on cooldown, so didn't have much of a way to escape there. And now, uh, yeah, as you say, the reset is pretty much inevitable. They can stay around without over committing, so they don't have to like run back to spawn or anything like that. As you can see, they're kind yeah. of just slowly playing around defense matrix. Loving the that just shows you how, how comfortable they feel having Hungjo Spark run at them. They do not yeah. expect to lose that fight. Nora jumping into the back, tries to get the sticky bombs stuck, but instead will get stuck himself. Goes ahead, uses the duplicate, but is instantly greeted with a hack and is knocked out, d uh, So, definitely a pretty brutal use of that duplicate ultimate here. The EMP comes through from Godsby, however, catches both of the tanks, and Jonak had already used the Transcendence. They managed to find one kill so far, but Jonak starts turning things back around. Gets the kill there on to Gucci. Libero duplicating Bebe, gets another Transcendence, and starts escorting them forward over onto 
the final bit of the point. We've got 55 seconds remaining. Hotba uses that self-destruct. Discord Orb is out onto the Baby Diva, but they still cannot finish him off, and Bebe gets taken down. Sasha gonna be demexed by Libero. Things start falling apart continually here for the Hangzhou Spark as kill after kill comes in favor of the NYXL. IDK now gonna be taken down and shoved way off the point is Adora, so they will be able to glide through, but considering the start, this is not bad for Hangzhou Spark as long as they can finish on Blizzard World. 34 yeah. seconds is what they gotta be looking to beat. Libero is, uh, is potentially our best uh, Echo that we have in the Overwatch League right now. I wouldn't now. even say potentially right now. I'd like, say that he just, bar, bar none, is. It's like, it's like he's playing with his mind instead of the keyboard. Like when you watch him play, it's like he's living a scene from an anime, or he's living through someone's fantasy. He's, it's like Jeff Kaplan and, and Team Four's vision for Echo is just personified in his play. I just how much, how many first-person view shots we've seen and over-the-shoulder cams we've seen from him and his movement and how long he stays alive. He doesn't make he he makes Echo look. Not like a fragile here. It makes Echo look tanky. He makes Echo look immortal. He makes Echo look like there's no risk uh, to playing this hero. And obviously there were times in the first two maps where he was a little bit more fragile with Gods Beyond the McCree. And this is the comp we were talking about, right? There was the big question mark on Gibraltar. Are they going to run the Zarya? I really wanted to see it. We didn't get it. But now we get to see that McCree, Torbjorn, Ryan Zarya comp on attack here. There's a lot more open space like I was talking about to touch the point to force that team fight into your favor with the Zarya. Uh, so there's a lot of chip damage that Libero can put off along the way. There's a lot of angles for Sabi to get flank hacks. But they're going to commit to it. This is what they've had the most success with in this series. And yeah. Godspeed's had a, the best success of shutting down Libero's Echo with this McCree so far. And I think that's why they're deciding to do this now. See if they can make it happen again. You can see right now Libero's positioning. He has to play around this house, this building here. Because of the sight lines of Godsby, he has to play around. He's doing less damage than he would otherwise. Yeah, he's got to play these narrow angles rather than move up into the sky. He'd be that much more vulnerable to getting knocked out by Godsby. So far, though, very neutral. As you can see, Sasha, zero energy. So even moving up here onto the high ground might not be the most threatening Zarya in the world. See some armor packs go forward there onto Jonak just to make sure that he can retreat successfully. Decent amount of damage dealt, but not much energy built there. But Gonsby manages to find an opening pick. Gets rid of St. Biolby as he's at 71% towards that EMP. He will be able to get back as long as the rest of the team can delay. And so far, they're doing an okay job of that. Jonak up onto the high ground, throws on the Bionade, manages to catch two, but now the Ant Matrix is toss here. In the back side, Flashbang coming in, but Godsby is forced away from that Ant Matrix, so he's not getting that extra damage. He's looking for a target, sees Mono, but can't quite get that shot off of the Deadeye. Stays alive, with the help of that Immortality Field. But now Gon has to peel back, play indoors. Gets a couple shots onto Libero, but cannot finish him off. EMP comes through from Sabe Yolby, who's back in the fight. Gushwe and Bebe both gonna be hacked by that one. Libero is back in, throws the Fire Strike, drops the hammer! Catches three, looks for the pin, can't find it. Mono is just picking up the pieces that have been shattered all over the floor. Libero does it yet again with a Reinhardt. And I don't want to spoil everyone's fun or anything like that, but these shatters are not as impressive as they look. You know, I think every time someone sees a big two, three, four man shatter in the Overwatch League, they just assume, wow, that was the play, like incredible. But it's actually really easy to do that when you're Libero and your echo positioning is insanely good and you're able to make these flanks happen. I think that's part of the reason why Hangzhou shied away from the Reinhardt on Gibraltar. They're coming back to it here, but once again, it's becoming their their bane and not actually helping them on these attacks. Gushwe has Shatter now. And obviously he's not going to be able to just fly into the, the other side of the enemy team and make a big yeah. Shatter happen. He has to work for it has to make sure that he gets out of the way of that Winston bubble because getting blocked by one of those is always a bit of a heartbreaker when you try to set up an Earth Shatter. It's not going to happen. She gets pooped off of the lava, but it doesn't matter. Hot Bus still will be taken down. Everybody going to pull around the corner. Libero, though. Only going to be able to find that turret. But yeah, Libero still continuing to do some work, but with that little HP, Sasha does manage to finish him off. So the cap does get ready to come through here onto point A. As Sabioldi will go ahead and leap out. I wonder if they'll change all by himself. I wonder if they'll change their cop here because it's gonna get a lot harder to use this. 
through this section of the map because you you don't get the ability to force New York to take a fight to where you are until the card gets to be. So New York could just do whatever they want. It's not like, you know, because essentially this is control and hybrid on A. So New York has to go to the point or they lose it. Whereas the card, you can play it slow. They're going to stick with it, though. This is what I'm talking about. Say Bilby could just take all uh -oh. the time in the world. Yeah. Well, they spot him out this time. He'll be fortunate enough to do so again next time around. EMP coming through from above. Catches numerous members on the side of the NYXL. And here we go again. Another huge play from Libero off the back of that duplicate. Honestly, that probably not even uh, necessary. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks cool. It, I mean, Libero look, Libero, you just, got, uh, if you win this, you get player of the match, all right? You don't have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to try I to mean, impress me, okay? I'm already impressed. <laughs> Alright, this is what... Look, I need I need a highlight reel of Libero from this match, and I need a low light reel from Lip and his EMPs from the last series. That's what I need. So, so SI not found, if you're awake and you're watching, please get on that, because it will be wonderful, and I trust you to find good enough music for it. Hillis always has all these requests, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the flashbang is good. Yes, it is, but it's not enough damage output to try and melt Mono before you get the Primal Rage off, so he does manage to stay alive with that. And it's just another really clean fight victory here, you know, for NYXL. He just managed to hold them back. Libero's like, don't touch them! Give all the old charge to me! 54%. <laughs> and Hangzhou Spark, there's no wind in the sails. I mean, at, at this, this point, Libero... Strong. At this point, Libero just needs to start 360 shattering. I mean, but like, uh, like, like this is where we're at. Whoa! Speaking of where we're at, Jonak is, uh, you know, just getting that, some of that extra All right, charge look, here. I, this is the you've got one chance at this now, Hangzhou. Like I said, this comp is tough to execute oh, here. Oh no 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 no! EMP comes out, manages to catch five, self destruct, gets rid of one, and Libero is now in the fight yet again. He's under some fire though, trying to be sustained, and he will be. Oh, managed to take him down, but he does have to retreat. But with one minute remaining, cart inching at the moment, Hangzhou Spark have to get something done. This is, uh, I, I, look, they have ults, but do they get me, but don't get me wrong, they, they don't have ults. Like, they can't use these. Not in a straight up fight, not the way they want to. I mean, it, New York, again, is just avoiding them. Like, they're not going to take the fight to the cart until they absolutely have to. Libero can wait till the perfect moment. So, hold again, and look at it. Reinhardt, Here teleport. Here we go again. Yeah, already going to be up to 75%. Gets booped back, goes in for the charge, catches a Dora, tries to drop the hammer. Nearly gets another Earth Shatter available. But that duplicate will go ahead and expire before that can happen. Goes, trades with Godsby, actually, in that minor 1v1. But Hangzhou Spark, can they get the card moving? That is another question. Gonsby's going to be respawning right now. Has that Deadeye available, but don't expect that to net him too much, even if he can get back in time to help fight back here against NYXL. Which way under some pressure, managing to stay alive, but constantly getting hacked at the moment. Bolt Corp comes through from Adora, looking for people to melt here around the cards. If you'll be going to be eliminated, 82% for that EMP. We'll see if the rest of the team can buy enough time for him to come back into the fight and use that. That eye doesn't find anything. The Matrix just chews up that shot. Top up plays back around the cart, causing havoc. I can't uh, believe he's buying this much time. The Hangzhou Spark. Yeah, and he's nearly got that self-destruct, so he might be able to get a reset. Say Byobi, gonna be knocked to the ground. They need to kill him off. He still has that EMP ready to go. It seems like they might just be able to push this one through. However, it. his motto jumps up into the air. So yes, they do do it. It's with a minute and 30 seconds left in the time bank. You know, that so, was, I mean, that was a pretty, uh, Valiant attempt from New York, but Hangzhou make it happen. EMP going to be used now. Couldn't get it off uh, earlier because he was shattered. Huge play from Gushui finally makes the shatter happen after being outclassed by Libero and, you know, obviously unfair situations, but still, the cart still rolls here. Sashin gets to keep the grab. And Godspeed's been using this Deadeye mostly just for peel for Mono when he dives on yeah. top of him. And uh, he's got that available, so a lot of tools here for Hangzhou after this EMP fight. Save Yolby dropping down on top of him with the hot bot layering in the self-destruct leads to two insta-kills. He needs to not get staggered. A little bit more. 
If they yeah, get staggered here, they're in big trouble, but they do have one really good push left in them. The EMP fight, those the one that you, we always talk about, the one you're going to lose, the one that you take just to trade that EMP Ooh. away. That would have been... Be. Yeah, that been HP bar was so dangerously low. Mono waiting around the corner, but here we go. Libero Nano. Nano. Fire Strike does not connect. He's going in for the pin, but they get smacked out of the way. Still manages to get that Shatter online. He tries to 180 Shatter. It does not happen. Can he get another one online? The answer is going to be no. And the Molten Core manages to take down Anamo. And now Mono gone as well. They have to be stuck to the card from here on out. There's a Hangzhou Spark. Jonah, and there's some fire trying to play around that pillar. They managed to lob in those right clicks from Sasha to take him down. But now we're into overtime. If they can finish, they will get that one Sashin. minute bump up. Sasha has low energy here. He's playing extremely far forward. He's starting to get it up a little bit, but. That's what they absolutely need to oh, snowball no. this. They don't have ults. They only have his energy to rely on to get, a, you know, three, four kills they need to close this out and to bring us to overtime. Yep, Adora still not respawn. Now going to be swapping over to the Reaper just to try to get back in time a little bit faster. Mortality field coming through. Mono leaping back over towards the spawn. And yeah, he stays alive long enough to escape. Hotbot, however, will lose out on the Mech Gonsby. Managing to pop that one. He sees Sabiobi in the back. Threatens him enough to force the translocator, but Libero, who's having swapped over onto the McGree himself, does go ahead and get rid of Sashin. Osby answers in kind, trying to trade back, trying to put them across this finish line. Then I rolling through, finds Anamo underneath the cart way into the back, and that is going to be the Nano Bruce coming through with a primal range just to pressure out Godsby. They get him into the corner, the EMP comes through, catches out of four members. Gushway taking a nap, now going to be woken up rudely by the Bio Grenade. He stands up, manages to find the Baby Diva, gets rid of Hotpa, but they all get cleaned up, and the OT nearly plummets down. Godsby pushing forward desperately, trying to stay alive. Adora rejoining with the Reaper, doing some serious work, but Libero is in the back line. He is taking these pot shots, trying to shut them down. Looks for Adora. He finds the kill. The Immortality Field buying more time as they get the knockout onto Sasha. And the OT will bleed away as we load a highlight, but that is going to be it. NYXL, they take it. Blizzard World and the series goes their way. That was Libero all the way. All the way, all the way, all the way. Absolutely. I mean, he's like, loading highlight is almost just like a meme because it's like... <laughs> Libero is just, <laughs> Libero is just like, okay, okay, headshot, okay, flashbang, kill the baby diva, and it's I'm loading my highlight own received, highlight, reel. highlight received. Let me just yeah. oh, let me just load my own highlights that I just made for player of the match because he has <laughs> got to be player of the match. Um, yeah, if, if he's not, then uh, if if uh, we'll if, riot. Yeah, if he's not player of the match, but tear this banner down. All right, well, okay, we, just, we just, just got the confirmation. Us. Yeah, it's going to be Libero, player of the match. Let's go <laughs> ahead and put that, put that beautiful man on screen because, good Lord, what a performance from him. Just absolutely astounding. Like I said, bar none, best, best echo in the league. has got to be. It seems like it so far. I mean, there are some arguments for some of the Western players uh, so far, but in Asia. Not as far like, as I'm concerned. <laughs> in Asia, no way. No one comes close. Yeah. Hanzo Spark made it easy for him with the compositions they were running for him to get – you know, big moments, obviously, on the Reinhardt, but, like... His, it wasn't even the Reinhardt play that was, like, the truly Yeah, the Reinhardt play wasn't stuff. the impressive part. It was just, like, his ability to fly, escape, yeah. do consistent damage, build, duplicate very quickly. Uh, and a composition that he was playing... The composition he was playing, it's had a McCree aspect to it throughout the entirety of the series. So, you know, he's playing yeah. against that as well. He's having to fight McCree sightlines against Godsby, uh, you know, an insane McCree across all timelines from Apex to Overwatch League. And, you know, the the impressive part, as you say, it's not the Reinhardt duplicates. It's just how well he survived, how much pressure he put Everything on. Everything that led up to him getting yeah. the duplicate. You know, how he got those ultimates built up so consistently. It was just a phenomenal play from him. And to quote our good friend, who and we'll also say happy birthday to him right now, with that beam, some beautiful tracking. Yeah. Uh, it was just wonderful to watch. I mean, good. I I haven't enjoyed watching an Echo more than this series right here from Libero. It was, it was, it was truly great. It was also truly happy phenomenal. birthday, Atlas. <laughs> yeah, happy birthday, Atlas. Beautiful tracking. I mean, that, I mean, that meme never die. Uh, it's not it's not nice of us to say that on his birthday, but um, hey, something else you know though to point out in the series. Let's not forget is Hangzhou tried to run this comp that is. It looked like it might be a soft to hard counter to what all the teams are running so far this week um, and have been running obviously for the last few weeks in some variations. The mm -hmm. Sombra Echo is somewhat shut down by this Torbjorn McCree 
Reinhardt Zarya. And it felt like an experiment. It felt like we learned a lot about how is how good is this comp? Does it work? Like, should other teams be doing this? And I think the biggest drawback is the Reinhardt being the the duplicate potential to duplicate the Reinhardt and then punish it in a weird way. Um, as Echo kind of like bends the rules of ult economy and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I do feel like that's what they struggle with most. But will every team have a Libero? Will every team be able to find that same value on Echo against this? Will they just be killed by the McCree? I think we're going to see more of this Reinhardt Zarya McCree. Yeah, and obviously most of the time with Torbjorn uh, for the rest of this week. I hope we get to see some of it tomorrow through the North American games. Mm. I, I don't think this is the last we've seen of this. I don't think Hangzhou is unique in that they're the only team doing this right now. I think we will see more of it. And I wonder, um, did it fail because Libero was so insanely good? Or will it fail no matter what with Reinhardt? Or will other teams find success? Um, so Hangzhou gave us a really cool question at the end of the series yeah. that the rest of the teams in the league are going to have to answer. Yeah, we need a larger sample size here uh, to be able to, you know, quite determine that. I just found it adorable that you said the, the game's tomorrow in NA. When in about six and a half hours or Something so, like I that. I don't even know what time it is anymore. I stopped looking at the clock because I, I was so invested uh, in, in that series. So I'm going to have... Uh, a wonderful surprise when <laughs> I turn off the, the camera, turn off the lights, and go look at my phone. But uh, thank you guys for sticking through with us for a, a very long evening of Overwatch. But boy, was it worth it to get to that series there at the end. Uh, just fantastic stuff. Congratulations to NYXL on an extremely strong performance and Libero on that player of the match. That does it for us here this morning, you know, evening, again, whatever, wherever you are. Uh, whatever is applicable. But uh, that's it for us for the weekend as well, for myself and Wolf. So thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll see you when we see you. Bye.